And so, um, if you, if you are serving a God that's not of not the Bible, you will find out one day because He will not heal you. He will not hear you when you cry. You know, He will not help you. You will find yourself confused, bewildered. But what happened? You did not pursue the God of the Bible. You're not going to be able to blame God. God has made Himself available to all of us. To the blood of the Son, Jesus Christ, the born again experience. We all can come to God. We all don't have to be confused at the end of this day. Because you know, we're all going to die one day. One day we're going to give an account. And I guarantee you, whoever you are so into is not going to be a good time. Whatever is keeping you from serving God, discovering God, will not be there on that day. You're going to stand naked and alone. And if you lived your life right, Jesus will be there. But if you haven't, you're going to be alone before God. And you know, I talk to some people on the street. And I ask them, what are you going to say to God when you get up there? And they sit there and go, oh, I don't know. If they can't answer me, what are you going to do in front of God? What are they going to do before a holy God? And what are we going to do? See, God has given us the privilege to know Him. God has made Himself available to us. There's um, there's got to be hundreds of churches on this island. You can go and get a Bible anywhere. You will have no excuse on that day. And then you're not going to, be able to blame anybody because so and so taught you this thing. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will be the guide to all truth. He said, You have not needed a teacher. And the Holy Spirit will teach you. And we've so run away from you. know, God gave apostles, prophets, and parents, pastors, and teachers for the work of ministry, the edifying of the saints to all come into unity of their faith. But that's not, that does not mean the Holy Ghost is dead. You know, it does, does not mean that God can you know, Anywhere you are, you can learn from God. And um, it's not it's not really optional at this time. It's not really optional to worship God. It's not optional to serve God. It is not optional to be born again. It is not optional to know who God is. You know, a lot we think that the Ten Commandments are just the ten in the Bible. This is the commandment of God. You see this right here? If God said it, you can believe it was a command. That's it, right? He didn't have to say this is this commandment. If it's in here and God said it, you need to obey it. And that's that. But until you discover who God is, you blow God off. You say, I don't really got to do that. Oh, God understands. Uh, you know, I can go watch pornos and this and that. And go to church Sunday. Smoke crack. You know, I can go pawn on my wife. I can fool around on my husband. I can go chicken fight. I can do all these things. And Sunday, I can tell God this and this. But you trample upon the blood of Jesus. Those days is ended. And you know, when God, um, it's the mercy of God that has not judged this nation. But you know what's more, it's the mercy of God has not judged us. We all at one time have done something that God's been doing. What are they doing now? What are they doing now? But that has to stop. And the thing, the only way it's going to stop is we begin to discover God. We begin to sit before God as God to reveal Himself to us. God is the most precious commodity in the entire universe. We neglect it. Neglect God all the time. We're, we are more concerned about this person liking or that person liking. But those, days, those days have really ended. And um, if you look at church history, this thing actually began in Jerusalem, in Israel. The gospel began in Israel. Now they are a, they are a secular nation. In all the different places this gospel traveled around the world before it got here. And people in America are so high. You know, Jesus told the disciples, the children of Israel, that uh, you're not doing what I wanted you to do with the gospel, so I'm going to take it from you. In America, people in America are so high to think that God will not do it to us. And then individually, individually, God has put something on your heart to do. God has given you the word, and God said, if you're not going to do it, I'll give it to somebody else. Then you will find yourself. You will find yourself. The worst thing that God can do to you is leave you to yourself. That God has decided He's not going to talk to you no more. He's not going to minister to you no more. He's not going to draw you unto Himself no more. That's the worst thing that God can give you on this planet. If God gave you AIDS or cancer or broke both your legs, there's still hope for you. But if God leaves you to yourself, you are done. You know, you know we don't just... We don't just run after God because of me. it was a good idea. If God leaves you to yourself, that should be a fear of all of us. If God decides one day I'm done talking to him, if God tells, like God told Samuel, stop praying for Saul, you're done. 
you know. He said, I'm not going to hear it with that no more. God told at times, he told the prophets not to pray for Israel. I don't want to hear about them anymore. God does that to you. If God tells people to stop praying for you, So I, you know, I don't have the Mary Poppins gospel because hell is hot and eternity is long. You know, and this, um, my boy Justin really doesn't have the Mary Poppins gospel. You know, hell is hot, eternity is long. And you know, I don't even, you know, I, the reason why I don't, I don't do prison ministry because there's no doorknobs. There's no door. There's no door. Only doors on the planet without doorknobs. But there's no exits in hell. Zero. Zero exits. I want you guys to read Matthew 7, 21. A lot of them say to me, Lord, Lord, shall I do the kingdom of heaven? And they that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. If you read down, it says, Many have prophesied, done many wonderful works. But he said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because I never knew you. So if you're doing church stuff without knowing God, it's working against you. You guys understand that? It's working against you, right? So, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your kindness and for your mercy. I thank you, Father God, you desire us to be in heaven with you, Lord God, so much so that you let your son die on the cross for our sins, Father. Father, we thank you for that today. Father, I pray, Father God, if anyone is unsaved under, under this tent, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you receive your son as Lord and Savior today. Father, I thank you for today, Lord, and I pray, Father, just to have your way in our lives, Father. In Jesus' blessing, we to God. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and close out so we can all just go ahead and stand. And when we clap our hands for the Lord for the best of our lives on today. It's very important that we know the Lord, that we know the Lord fully, and that we know the Lord completely. And it's something that we're going to spend the rest of our lives doing. Every single day of our lives, we're going to spend it getting to know God greater and greater and greater. And it's the great privilege that we have that God wants to do that. He wants to do that. In the Old Testament, he said that he was a God who hides himself, but now he's a God who reveals himself in the Son of the Lord Jesus. And he wants to continue to reveal himself to us, in us, and through us. Praise God. Yeah. And, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray and then I'm going to close out the service. And then if anyone who desires uh, individual prayer for anything, we don't care what it is. We don't care what it is. Uh, we're going to want you to come on up and then we're going to pray for you. The, the team. We're going to pray for you. Praise God. We're going to the Lord. That whatever, whatever thing that you bring before the Lord, it will be done. Hallelujah. And uh, lastly, um, if there's anyone here who has not been baptized in water, uh, any of you that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you have not been baptized in water, you've not been baptized in water, then we'd just like you to come up to and we'd just like to share a few things with you so that we can get you baptized. It's the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ when you go forth and make disciples that you teach all things and also baptize it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. When you get baptized in water, you get baptized into the death of Jesus. When you come out of the water, you raise it to the newness of life like Jesus is. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and pray. Well, Father, we thank and love you today. And we thank you, Father, for all the things that you've shown unto us. We thank you for your progressive names, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that even where your progressive names end in the Bible, you continue to progress your, the knowledge of yourself unto us. And we thank you, Father, that we were told that we can learn about you everywhere and in every place and in every situation. And Father, we can learn about you at night. We can learn about you in the daytime. We can learn about you in the storm. We can learn about you walking the, walking the shoreline. We can learn about you in the water, God. You're always available. You're always open to us. And we thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers, God. We thank you, Father, that our heart will be open to contain you, Lord, that you will fall out of it, God. We thank you, Lord, you reveal yourself so strongly in our lives, God, that we would never be mistaken about you again. And that, Father, you would change us from the inside out, that we would go forth and change the world for you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 We dismiss praise the Lord. Thank you.